biggest night is coming. June 28th. The 2020 BET Awards. Sunday, June 28th at 8, 7 Central. Hey, John. Hey, Beauty. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, John. I just touched down in your city. I'm in Charlotte. Watch out now. <laughs> So congratulations on your nomination. How does that Thank feel? You. Thank you. So it's really good. I tell you, I, I shared earlier and I share with you that just being a part of anything that BET does, it's always been a blessing to me. It's where I got my start. I was yeah. I was the number one cat on Bobby Jones. When Bobby Jones, hey. John B. Key was on, everybody stayed on from church day. But now, yeah. um, um, so it, it, it's like a fan reunion to me or coming home. So I was really yeah. excited to not just get the nomination, but to be a part. Yeah, I'm super excited. So cool. So excited for you. Okay, so recently you and Hezekiah Walker teamed up for the first gospel matchup on Versus TV, which was so dope. Y'all dropped all our favorite praise songs. So my question is, with all this craziness going on with the pandemic, <clears throat> systemic racism, why is it so important that we keep praise on our lips? And how it's, can praise help us through this? Praise is so important in this season because uh, praise is that place you go um, and you don't have to give a, a, an excuse for being there, if you would. It's almost like a personal place. It's an escape. But in that escape to me, my praise and worship strengthens who I am. You mm. know, I made a comment. I don't even know where not long ago. If I don't worship, I die. I've got yeah. to do it. So to be able to go back, and it's funny you said that, going back into those old songs reminded me that the logos matter, the logic matter, mm -hmm. because that's what mm -hmm. the lyrics were. Everybody yeah. gave me credit for being an amazing lyricist. And I thank you, but that was right. scripture. I was grabbing yeah. scripture, you know, yep. putting a little rhyming words here and there. So it was really good for me. I love Bishop. He loves me. It really wasn't a battle. Of course, at the end, everybody's saying who won, who lost. But we didn't see it as, as that. We really were in the room being a blessing and blessing God. Yeah, there. and we were blessed indeed. <laughs> cool. um, so to piggyback off of that, with you know, with coronavirus and we've lost a lot of people. A lot of people have lost their lives. How do you convince non-believers and even believers that even still God is still good? He's still God and He's still in control. <clears throat> I, I'm gonna tell you something that's amazing. A, as a pastor, um, um, and, and I'm a hood pastor, I'm straight in the street, everybody <laughs> tell you. I love the four wall structure, and I pastor a very large church, and I thank God for the building and the stage and the lights. But anybody who knows me, I pastor after eight o'clock. I'm out in the street feeding. I have a love right. for the homeless, it's just amazing. I love what I do. That being said, more than impressing those that are not safe to believe what I believe, John the Baptist had to deal in the season of the Gnostics, those that didn't really believe. And they told him, say, look, you can have your Jesus, but you can't have him in the physical. You can have him as a spirit. John said, well, hold up. You can't tell me that because I hung out with him. That's my mm. attitude. I've mm -hmm. hung out with Jesus. I know what he'll do. He saved me. My, my spirit of, of deliverance came from understanding who he is. Didn't care what right. color he was, how short he was. I know. When he came into my life, the spirit of cocaine left. Because I didn't know cocaine mm. as a drug. I knew it as a spirit. Whether I was yeah. selling it or using it. So I say to you that I, I want to encourage people just to embrace who you are. Who you are and what you are. The essence. Who you are and what you are. And know I'm going to be an example. That's yeah. how I'm not going to tell them. I'm not going to convince them. I'm going to be the example that in spite of all of the pandemic, I didn't lose anything. God's blessed me even more. He's multiplied my seed, my life. Yes. I'm so happy. You know, mm. great things has happened in my life. And, 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 and I'm going to be the example. Yes, I love that. Okay, so real quick, what's next for you? What can we expect to see you do next? Listen, I'm working on a movie project about my father. It's called The Lost Ooh. Song. And you're going to love it. It's 1947. He gets a record deal out of New York on the way to New York. The Ku Klux Klan yeah. turned their bus around, shoot the tires out. So I talk about encouragement from 1947 to 1975. Everything he went through. The music is great. All the music is original. The Lost Song talks about that song that you didn't hear. Uh, during the movie, there's a, a tour. It's Chronicles along with the movie. 
with James Cleveland, Mahalia Jackson, the Dixie Hum Hummingbirds, and the Caravans. Of course, we changed the names, didn't want the lawsuits, but you're going to love it. 1975, they all come together. And I tell you, it's going to be an amazing movie, an amazing ending. My son, John P. Keith, the third place, me, plays my dad, I'm sorry, in the movie until he's 35. Bishop Rance Allen takes over and plays my father from 35 until he passes. And it is amazing. an amazing movie. I'm excited about it. I can't wait to see it. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, John. It was so thank good you. speaking to you. And I'll see you soon. Bless you. Take care. The 2020 BET Awards, hosted by Amanda Seals, Sunday, June 28th.